Hi, boys and girls. I am back this week with some more stories for you. If you remember last week, uh, we were kind of looking at our author, Kevin Hankies, and we were taking a look at the characters that are in those stories. And we also took a look at how the author and the illustrator can use words, pictures, and different parts of the pictures, like specifically, what does a character's face look like? Or what is going on in the story to show how they are feeling? If you remember, we saw that in Julius, the baby of the world. She was being very mean to Julius, and she was saying very rude things. So the author used the words to show us that she was not very happy, and she did not like Julius. If you remember in Sheila Ray the Brave, the illustrator kind of used the pictures and the illustrations to show when Sheila was feeling upset when she was crying in the woods. So there are some different ways that the author and the illustrator can do that. And then we also looked at, in Bailey Goes Camping, how characters can, sh or how the author and illustrator can show how characters feel about other characters in the story. Like mom and dad felt bad for Bailey not being able to go camping, so they kind of helped him recreate the camping trip at home. So today, and for the rest of this week, what we are going to look at is we are going to continue looking at how we can explore feelings in some of these different stories. So today, we have a story called The Giant Jam Sandwich. I'll go ahead and put the cover up right here for you. And we're going to listen to someone else read this story, but there are a few things that I want you to keep in mind when we're listening to this story. So even though we are not there in this story today, we are not helping to make a giant jam sandwich, and we're going to find out why they are making that. Even though you're not there, I want you to think about how you would feel if you were there. So you may find that you agree with how the characters in the story feel. Maybe you feel like them, or maybe you would not feel like them. So the author and illustrator can kind of use those things, like the words in the pictures, to kind of help us understand how we might feel if we were in that same situation. And we can think back to Sheila Ray once again. If you were lost in the woods, how might you feel? You'd probably agree with Sheila Ray, and you would be very upset, might even be crying because you're scared. So keep that in mind when we listen to our story today, because I think that you are going to kind of feel like the characters in this story feel. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put our story on. Go ahead and listen to that, and I hope you enjoy today the Giant Jam Sandwich. I'll see you after the story is over. The Giant Jam Sandwich. Story and pictures by John Vernon Lord with verses by Janet Burroway. One hot summer in itching down, four million wasps flew into town. They drove the picnickers away, they chased the farmers from their hay, they stung Lord Swell on his fat bald pat, they dived and hummed and buzzed and ate. And the noisy, nasty nuisance grew, till the villagers cried, what can we do? So they called a meeting in the village hall, and Mayor Muddlenut asked them all, what can we do? And they said, good question, but nobody had a good suggestion. Then back the baker leapt to his feet and cried, What do wasps like best to eat? Strawberry jam! Now wait a minute, if we made a giant sandwich, we could trap them in it. The gentlemen jeered, the ladies squealed, and Farmer Seed said, Use my field. Bap gave instructions for the making of the dough, Mix flour from above and yeast from below, Salt from the seaside, water from the spout, Now thump it, bump it, bang it about. While they were working and working hard, Some more made a tablecloth out in the yard. When they were done, the dough was left to rise, Till the loaf was a mountain in shape and size. They hitched it up with a bit of fuss, To tractors, cars and the village bus, And took it to the oven they'd made on the hill, Fifty cookers in an old brick mill. For hours and hours they let it cook, It swelled inside till the window shook, It was piping hot when they took it out, And the villagers raised a mighty shout, Isn't it crusty? Aren't we clever? But the wasps were just as bad as ever. 
the loaf was left to cool, and then the people watched while six strong men took a great big saw and sliced right through. Everybody clapped, and they cut slice too. The village bus, they all agreed, would spoil the fields of farmer seed, so eight fine horses pulled the bread to where the picnic cloth was spread. A truck drew up and dumped out butter, and they spread it out with a flap and a flutter. Spoons and spades slap and slam, and they did the same with the strawberry jam. Meanwhile, high above the field, six flying machines whirred and wheeled, ready for the wasps to take the bait, and then there was nothing to do but wait. Suddenly the sky was humming, all four million wasps were coming. They smelled that jam, they dived and struck, and they ate so much that they all got stuck. The other slice came down, ka-splat, on top of the wasps, and that was that. There are only three wasps that got away, and where they are now I cannot say. But they never came back to Itching Down, which is not a waspish sort of town, but a very nice place to dance and play, and that's what the villagers did that day. What became of the sandwich? Well, in Itching Down they like to tell how the birds flew off with it in their beaks and had a feast for a hundred weeks. So that was our story, the giant jam sandwich today. Pretty short story, but uh, kind of a cool one. I like that. It's kind of an older story, so you can kind of see it looks a little bit different, maybe a little bit older. And uh, we were able to look at the pictures there and listen to the author's words. What happened in that story? Right, so for some reason, the town was kind of invaded by all these giant bugs. And the people were feeling what about those giant bugs? Yeah, they were a little bit worried, maybe a little scared, but I would say they were mostly uh, kind of annoyed by those bugs. You know, if you kind of feel a mosquito by you, you might swat him away because he's kind of annoying you or bothering you. Okay, so just like in this story, they kind of felt that same way. And if you were there in the town that was being invaded by giant bugs, do you think that you would feel the same way? Would you feel annoyed, maybe a little bit scared? I agree. And much like the characters in the story did, I would kind of want to do whatever it takes to kind of get rid of these bugs. I don't know if uh, I would think that building a giant jam sandwich was the best idea, but how did that work out for our characters in this story? Yeah, their uh, crazy idea of building this giant jelly or jam sandwich kind of worked really well and actually got the bugs out of their town. So we can kind of put ourselves in the shoes of those characters and kind of think about what they felt and how we might feel if we were in that situation. So in the case of this story, we did feel like they would feel, or we would feel like they did in this story. Okay, we will continue looking at some different stories later in this week, and I want you to just keep in mind that, you know, it it's okay that uh, we were not in the story, but we can always kind of think about what we might feel like if we were there. So I want you to kind of do that the next time you are reading or listening to a story. If you were there, how would you feel? Okay, thanks for listening with me today. Bye-bye.